Well, gotta love Minnesota. What is today? Uh, 19, April 19th. Another uh, four or five inches. Really pretty snow. The solar panels are <coughs> got their typical covering of it. Trees look real nice. Tracker's still tracking good, but obviously we got to get it cleaned off. Well, we better get to work. All right, I know some of you are interested in the, uh, the new Sun grid tie inverters that are good for wind. One of the questions that comes up is what kind of divert load that you should have on the uh, back side of that Sun wind GTI. Now in a typical <coughs> situation with a wind turbine, you're gonna, the wind turbine is going to generate three phase AC uh, off of the windings of the stator. You run that through a rectifier. What the rectifier does is put that what's called wild AC into a DC voltage of some level and the voltage the DC voltage generally will go up linearly with the uh, RPM of the motor of the generator and uh, the only thing that we will restrain it is if it's tied to something like a battery so in a typical case where you have an off-grid system with battery charging, that DC voltage coming off of here will rise up until it reaches the level of the battery voltage. And then when it gets slightly above it, some amps can start to flow to put the charge into the battery. And the batteries will basically hold the level down. Like in the case of a 12 volt battery, it's about 14 and a half volts is kind of the top end. Above that point, you'll start to boil out the uh, excess uh, electrolyte and fluid and ruin the batteries eventually. So the batteries are really what's restraining the voltage of the turbine from going any higher. The next thing you need to do on your off-grid system is add a divert controller. The best ones to use are these solid state ones that ha don't have any relays. You can get them from Windy Nation and other sources. They're, they're called divert controllers. Or charge controllers. They're only about $130. They're much better than the the um, relay based ones that you see on eBay and places. Uh, <clears throat> the basic purpose of the divert controller is to assure that while the wind is blowing and your batteries are charging when the batteries reach that uh, fully charged state that they they divert the, the power that's coming off the generator over to uh, what's called a divert load. So it has a set point value in here, generally about 14.3 or 14.4, 14.5 on the case of a 12 volt system to divert that power over a set of resistors or a heating element or a power element. Uh, in some cases, you'll, it'll, if there's any excess charge already on the batteries, it'll bleed that off too through the divert load itself. And uh, if everything's working well, then this should maintain your batteries at fully charged and allow there to be a load on the turbine at all times, which is safe to do. If you don't have the load on the turbine, then the turbine will be allowed to continue to spin up and eventually, if it's very high winds, could actually damage the turbine. The, the case is a little bit different when we go to a on-grid system where we have uh, the same kind of thing, three-phase AC coming off, go through a rectifier, but now you're going into a grid tie inverter and the idea here you want to reduce your utility bill by taking some of the taking that power that's coming off the generator 
generating power that feeds into the AC line to either slow down your meter or even make it go in reverse. But you got the same problem. There'll be a point where this converter cannot take all the power possibly that the turbine's generating and uh, needs to divert it over to a divert load. So this new Sun G uh, class turbine or Sun G class grid tie inverters, they do have a divert load output. The one I have for an example here is the what's called the 22 to 60 volt version. So at 60 volts, two MOSFETs inside will start to switch on and they will divert all of the power that's coming on on the input side here. We'll divert it right to this output port. So you're going through two MOSFETs that are tied to the same heat sink and but uh, all the power that that comes in will actually go out at that point until the voltage drops back down below 60 volts again. So the question in that case is uh, what kind of divert load uh, sizing do we need on that kind of system. So here's an end view of the the Sun G, Sun 1000G uh, with the input DC here and then here's the dump port output but it has the normal flashing lights that you've seen on the other ones. And these are these are pretty good units if you uh, treat them properly. <clears throat> if I look at typical uh, parametric view of a, of a PMA or a wind turbine or a PMG, it'll have two things that you want to test initially. You want to test it with no load on it and just see what the voltage goes up as a function of RPM. So here on the example of the Winchura 750, here's the open surface voltage here in the blue. Rises up from about 12 volts at low RPM here to just above 60 volts on the high end. And if you notice the divert setting that the GTI that we're looking at here does have a 60 volt level. So it is targeting some of these better PMGs that are on the market. The uh, if I do another test where I now I'm shorting out the stator, so I'm taking that uh, output of the bridge and just running it through an ammeter, basically shorting it. You can see that the current capability of this PMA or PMG, if you want to call it that, generator, can vary anywhere from uh, 18 amps all the way up to close to 60 amps. Excuse me. Well, it's on more over on the right axis here with the red. Uh, it, it's about 14 amps all the way up to maybe uh, high 40s. And they recommend that you you know when you get to about 40 amps of output on the uh, 750 that that's about the point where you should want to start furling your your um, turbine if you don't have the turbine that they supplied. You're making your own type of thing. But it does show you that you can get some pretty good amp output of this PMA PMG. Now one thing I want to bring up is a lot of the car PMAs that you see on the market on eBay they have a big problem because they cannot carry very much current and so they are designed for high voltage. Well if you look here's one example of a, that I took off of one of the charts that are on one of the eBay sellers pages it shows that it will hit 60 volts at only 200 RPMs, which is barely spinning. That's like three revolutions, three and a half revolutions per second. So very quickly, when that turbine starts to spin up using one of these 22 to 60 volt uh, GTIs, that it'll overvolt very quickly and all the power will then be dumped to the dump load. Well, you clearly don't want that to happen. So that's really something that you want to keep in mind any of these uh, low-end car PMA based turbines they're really not supported for grid tying with the Sun grid tie inverters just because their voltage goes up too fast and they just don't have the capability to carry the current like some of these better turbines like the Winchura or the Windy Nation products. So if we get back to the divert <coughs> question on the uh, the 1000 watt as an example. Here's a couple things that we want to consider. First, our obje objective in this case is not really to to p keep a load on the turbine or reduce battery. What we, our objective is to slow that turbine down as soon as possible so we can get that GTI to get back to working to feeding watts back into the grid. This takes a different kind of divert load than you would use with battery charging. 
couple considerations. We don't want to exceed 100 volts on that output port because the, the MOSFETs that are used on there, they're only rated to 100 volts. So it's actually, you want to stay quite clear of that if you can. And you don't want to exceed the divert load MOSFET amperage output, which is not necessarily documented, but we've looked at the parts that are used in there and have an idea of what is safe to recommend for an amp rating on that output port on this particular one. You want to basically put a heavy enough load on that turbine <coughs> than what the GTI provided. So the GTI was trying to convert about a thousand watts in this example, only about probably about 800 went to the grid because there's losses within the GTI. So we can use some of those data points to calculate out what we would need for a, a load in terms of ohms. So if we take the 60 volts of this GTI, which is near its max, 1,000 watts in, 800 out, as I mentioned. Above 60 volts, all 1,000 watts will move to that output port virtually immediately. That's equivalent to 16 and 2 thirds amps. If we target about 25 amps on that divert port at, at 60 volts, you can see that that will equate to about 1,500 watts of load that you'd like to put out there of some type. <clears throat> well, using the equation for watts versus uh, relative to volts and resistance, we can solve for resistance and come out with a number of 2.4 ohms. So what we're really shooting for here is about a 2.4 ohm load on the output of this GTI to bring put enough load on there to get that turbine to, to slow back down once the once the GTI has pushed the voltage to the output port. Hopefully it'll only be stuck in that divert mode for a, a few seconds if we do everything right. A couple of the options at 2.4 and 1500 watts of heat dissipation you can have five 12 ohm 300 ohm rated resistors in parallel you can have three at 7.2, you can have two at 4.8, or you can have one at 1500 watts or higher. And again, the or higher means you can put a higher wattage rating one uh, there. That would just give you some margin so that uh, you don't have to worry about running at exactly the peak wattage level when the voltage gets flowing through and the current flowing through these resistors. But as we said, we're really not wanting these things to be on for a few seconds, but then again, it could be sitting right there up, up at 60, 61 volts for a long time, just toggling back and forth. And these could over time be running at their full watt rating. So it's something to be aware of. So I would tend to opt to go a little bit on the higher wattage on the resistors of choice. Just from a dollar standpoint, <clears throat> if you look around, you can get these uh, 300 watt or th 300 watt resistors, so five of them for about 20 bucks a piece, so $100 all the way down to $50 the larger you go with them, but they're a little bit harder to find the higher wattage rating ones. Now one thing that I wanted to end with is that you can see there's a lot of these divert load banks that you see on and divert load controllers with uh, dump loads on, all together kind of in an all-in-one system and look how they mount their resistors. They run them horizontally like this, which means the heat coming off of one is going to heat up the next one, which is going to heat up the next one, which is going to heat up the next one. That's going to cause these these upper ones to not be able to individually handle the wattage rating that they have. So this is a terrible way to orient your dump load resistors. There's an equal problem if you see them mounted vertically. The heat that's generated on the lower end is going to heat, up, heat up the higher end of the of the, the same resistor so you can get a big temperature difference from top to bottom on these resistors and they're probably going to fail pretty quickly. We're talking about a lot of watts here. So really what you want to do is mount them horizontally so that they don't heat each other up. You put one next to the other, next to the other, and then wire them up as they need to be. So anytime you see people trying to sell them in this kind of configuration, you really got to be worried that they even know what they're doing. All right, uh, hope this answers some questions and uh, we'll talk to you later.